Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Just waiting for the remaining to, to join the meeting. Could you send me the message that you are able to listen to me or not? Is it it's all right? Okay, let's start the today's topic. The uh, as you can see on the PowerPoint slide, the today's topic is retinal detachment. So first, we will talk about a little bit uh, uh, of the applied anatomy of the retina, and. Uh, As you know, the innermost neural layer, there, there are three layers of the eyeball, the outer protective layer, the middle vascular covering, and the, and the innermost nervous layer or the neuronal layer of, of the eyeball, which is, which is light sensitive and it is called retina. The, if, if you can recall your knowledge of embryology, at a very earlier weeks of life maybe at seven or eight millimeter stage you can see the optic vesicles on both sides of the cephalic end of the of the embryo and it is what is called as an optic vesicles and these optic vesicles they they transform into an optic cup just you imagine if you have got a inflated small balloon and you put a tennis ball and press this balloon that will change this balloon will change into a cup like structure having two layers one the layer which is invaginated by your ball and the one which is on outer, outer side and this optic cup which is transformed from the basic vesicle has got two layers the one outer layer and the one inner layer the these the inner layer of this optic cup proliferate into multiple neuronal cell layers into different neuronal layers of the retina and the outer layer which is transformed into the what is called as the pigment epithelium of the retina. It is this potential space between these two layers of the optic cup which is considered responsible for separation of these two layers, the pigment epithelial layer and the remaining layers of the retina which are formed, which develop from the inner layer. And so this is what is called as retinal separation or the retinal detachment. The axons of the ganglion cells which give rise to as, as I have told you that it is the inner layer which, which multiply and to become multi-layered or multi-cells multiple layers of the cells in this inner layer and they are formed as as you can recall by the anatomy that different layers of the retina 
and including them the innermost the ganglion cell layer then there is a uh, bipolar cells and the nuclei of the rods and cones and the rod, rods and cones are just in the, i mean in contact with the outermost layer the pigment epithelium and these are the exons of the ganglion cell layer which it forms the nerve fiber layer and this nerve fiber layer from all parts of the retina they converge on to the to the optic disc to form the optic nerve and go out of the eye through the up through the can canal in the sclera and, uh, and and to form the optic nerve and go towards the chiasma so it is the axons of the ganglion cell layers which forms the optic nerve and and it is because of this whenever the retina the neural layer of the retina is detached from the epithelium it remain attached to the optic nerve if something which if you cannot see at the retina in opacities of the cornea and lens by the b scan you can see and i will show you afterwards that it remain attached to the retina so all detachments of the retina they although they are detached from the pigment epithelium but still they remain attached to the optic nerve because it is the part which is going into in into to become the the part of the retina is becoming the optic nerve at the optic disc retina contains about 120 million rods and 6 million cones in the young adult so if next is the different uh, parts of the retina the as you can see the very the most prominent part of uh, if you look at the retina through the dilated pupil you can see the optic disc round a relatively wider area as compared to the reddish uh, remaining retina and the more red uh, the branching uh, blood vessels the retinal blood vessels and and then uh, another important part is the central part of the retina which is fovea map foveola fovea and the macula macula is a larger area uh, within the vascular arcade uh, and uh, it is a relatively darker area with with the uh, no blood vessels around a little bit area with there is no blood vessel it is called as is a is a foveal a vascular zone and uh, this this is what is the normal anatomy the optic disc the more important more prominent than the the central part of the posterior pole of the eyeball the the macula fovea and the center of the fovea that is called as foveola these are important landmarks of the of of the uh, of the retina if you look at the dilated pupil the central part of the retina has uh, uh, the 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 this clinical macula uh, which is about 5.5 mm area of the center of the retina and this corresponds to about 20% of the visual field the small area which is about 5.5 mm from the center in the center of the retina it corresponds to the visual fields of about 20% so the central field defects which are which you see and which you check well you are by checking the central field this is the, this part which is taking to giving you this part of the field the density of the cones in the fovea is about 4000 to 5000 per mm the retina has got different parts the peripheral retina is from the ora serrata from the periphery to the equator of the eyeball and the central retina has has got the uh, the macula and and the fovea which i have already described then the fovea is about 1.5 mm slightly depressed relatively dark and pigmented area this is this is a little bit concave and you if you put light of the ophthalmoscope into it due to this will be call it clivus this uh, relatively concave slightly concave surface of the sent of the fovea fovea that gives a small reflex of the light coming back indicating a good health of the fovea this is called foveal reflex the diseases of the fovea if you distort the surface it it causes loss of the foveal reflex so this is what is an anatomy could give you the clinical signs the why it is darker in color it has got a xanthocel pigment and also the 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 retina is very thin in this part so that the light could go 
easily up to the pig, up, up to the photoreceptors and that's why the pigment epithelium which is behind this thin retina that gives a relatively darker color the fovea contains greatest population of the cones about 15000 per millimeter the center of the fovea again is very small part 0.35 millimeter only which is called as foveola and again it has got ex exclusively a cone photoreceptor area and there are about 2500 cones in this very small 0.35 millimeter area of, of the foveola. The fovea A vascular zone is again important in vascular disease of the retina and sometimes this foveal A vascular zone is affected in the, in the process of fibrosis or neovascularization. So talking about learning about a little bit of the anatomy, you, we know that the blood supply of the, of the retina, it comes from the central retinal artery, which is a branch from the uh, internal carotid artery. And uh, uh, most of the uh, layers of the retina, they are supplied by, supplied by the central retinal artery uh, we're talking about the thickness of, of, the, uh, of the layers of the retina. It is only the photoreceptor area and the pigment epithelium, which is supplied by the choriocapillaris, which is part of the uveal tract or the choroid. So the choroid which supplies is the outer layers of the neuroretina, including photoreceptors of the retinal pigment epithelium. And there is sometimes in 20% of the persons, there is a celioretinal artery is also present and it is responsible for blood supply to the macular area. Another very important anatomical landmark in the understanding of the retinal detachment is the vitreous attachments. The vitreous is strongly attached to some parts of the uh, of the retina. So if you try to pull the vitreous towards, towards the cornea or towards any of the direction, there is pull on that part, those parts of the retina to where the vitreous is attached on the other sides. So the vitreous is the uh, vitreous base is about three to four millimeter wide where the vitreous is strongly attached to the peripheral part of the retina and the area of the ciliary body, which is just adjacent to the, to the cori, it is called pars plana. And this part of the pars plana and the peripheral part of the retina, vitreous is attached strongly. Again, vitreous is also attached uh, to the back surface, the posterior surface of the lens, and to the margin of the optic disc, and sometimes on the macular area as well. So any movement of the vitreous, any stretching of the vitreous, any pulling on the vitreous, will result in pulling of that part of the retina. And sometimes due to this continuous pulling and due to, due to the fact that there are the, the peripheral part of the retina is less vascularized as compared to the central part, there may be degeneration of, the, of the, that area of the retina where the vitreous is continuously pulling by the movements. So this result in formation of the small holes and these small holes may sometimes be responsible for the detachment of the retina, the, our topic, today's topic of discussion. Having this, uh, an anatomy, the applied aspect of the anatomy of the retina, uh, knowing that what the structure we are talking, where is it placed, what are its different types, what are its peculiarities, and how the retina, the neural layer of the retina, why it separates from the, from the pigment epithelium, not in between the layers of the, of the retina, and the retinal detachment is a developmental and, and effect due to which there is a separation. So learning this, now we want to know that if there is a disease of the retina, if there is any insult to the retina, how the retina responds. You know the most of the part of that there are no pain fibers, there are no vibratory fibers, there are no such tactile fibers or, or receptors. They are, these are not present in the retina. And so when, whenever you stimulate the retina with anything mechanically or sometimes it can go, give only to the sensation of vision 
by stimulation of the photoreceptors. If you physically or by inflammation or by any insult, you, you just irritate or you just uh, touch the retina, it can give you only and only the vision sensation or the sensation of flight. No pain, nothing else. So the, these are not the features of the retinal diseases. If, the, if you can see, if you can feel pain or something else, it may be due to the adjacent structures being inflamed due to the same insult. But how the retina respond to the different diseases is, one is, is that we call it a different types of exudates and the soft exudates, these are called cotton wool spots. And the harder exudates and the, sometimes there are leakage of the blood from the blood vessels into the retina, different lateral layers and we call it retinal hemorrhages. And then sometimes there's edema of some parts of the retina and the most important among this is the macular edema because it is going to affect the vision. The fifth way they, the, the retina could respond is the formation of the breaks as I have just told you that it is the adhesion of the vitreous to the degenerated retina that may give rise to the, to the creation of the breaks. And there may be some, particularly in cases of inflammation, it is a pigment epithelium which proliferate to in response to the inflammatory process and so there may be a retinal pigment epithelial disturbances. The last one, this is extremely important again, is the retinal neovascularization. The retinal neovascularization is there as a response to the ischemia of some part of the retina. If there is an ischemia of the same, some part of the retina due to capillary occlusion, due to other occlusion of the of, of different uh, arterioles of the, blood, of the retina, then there is a attempt by nature to form more and more blood vessels to, to, to compensate for the ischemia. And these new vessels, they are very delicate. And again, they are very, uh, although they are formed as a, for, for a benefit of producing or uh, having a blood supply to the ischemic area, but the neo vessels are very delicate and they easily, easily uh, result in hemorrhages. And so this neovascularization process is, is considered as a very harmful uh, reaction of the retina to the disease. So talking about the, uh, all these, uh, then learning about different reactions of the retina, how can it work? Now we, uh, we will come to the top, actual topic of uh, uh, retinal detachment. Again, the developmentally retina has two layers. Retina has got two layers. One develops into the pigment epithelium adjacent to the choroid, and the second develops into the neuronal layers of the retina. And these developmentally different layers become separated in the retinal detachment. So the retinal detachment can be defined as it is a separation of the neural layers of the retina from the pigment epithelium of retina due to accumulation of the fluid in the potential space between these two uh, layers of the retina. This uh, this uh, subretinal fluid, the SRF, subretinal fluid, is derived from the from the vitreous. From the vitreous, it it enters into the hole which is formed in, in the peripheral part of the retina or in the central part of the retina, where, wherever the hole is, and it goes in between the, these uh, in, in in a space in between these two layers, and so there is a separation of the retina and this fluid which is separating the retina is called subretinal fluid. What are the different types of the retinal detachment? One very important and very common, uh, although not, not less common as compared to the, the fractional retinal detachment, the regmatogenous or primary retinal detachment. The primary retinal detachment is diagnosed when the, the, the retina is separated due to presence of the breaks or holes in the retina. Break or a hole in the retina, in Latin, it is called regma. 
so when there is ragma or a break in the retina and these are responsible for prime for, for for retinal separation or retinal detachment this type of retinal detachment is called as ragmatogenesis or primary retinal detachment there are certain types of secondary retinal detachment as well and one of the very important one is called tractional retinal detachment if due to disease already present in the eye and in the retina there are already formation of the fibrovascular bands either in between two parts of the retina or in between some on the retina on one side and the vitreous on the other side these they you know whenever there is fibrosis there is contraction of the fibrous tissue and this contraction of the fibrovascular bands will result in lifting of the retina and so that means that is um, the retina is being pulled from its place by these fractional fractional bands and so this is what is called as tractional retinal detachment then there is an exudative retinal detachment when there is an excessive amount of inflammation in the cases of a of a very severe chorio retinitis in this case the choroid is also involved and this results in the exudative retinal detachment the solid retinal detachment is the one with due one due to the presence of a tumor behind the retina that means of the choroid most of the time it is the malignant melanoma of the retina, of the choroid which actually is uh, is in when it's increasing in size it pushes the uh, retina towards the vitreous and so there is a retinal detachment and whenever you look at detachment and you you have to see uh, the holes if you cannot see the holes then you try to find out when there is a there is a tumor behind this detached retina or not so the second one is the ragmatogenesis type or primary second is the secondary among the secondary there are tractional exudative and solid detachments and sometimes there there is a combined uh, there, there is a combined mechanism of having a ragmatogenesis and tractional detachment and they very commonly happen in proliferative or advanced diabetic eye disease so when there is a tractional detachment and there is a combined with the formation of the holes and so there is a combination of a primary and tractional detachment at the same time this slide has already been explained the retinal detachment uh, at the primary and the fluid which is derived from the vitreous and then there is a tractional detachment either between the vitreous and the causes are the proliferative retinopathy and the retinopathy of prematurity and eels disease this retinopathy of prematurity and eels disease is very common but less than the diabetic retinopathy so this is how this is a picture of a, a sketch like thing which is just telling you that you can see that the uh, in the center there is a there is a small area where there is no vitreous and there is leucophyte vitreous and when vitreous contracts the area where it is attached uh, to the retina it is being pulled and so the retina is separated and you can see still the separated part of the retina is attached to the center of the optic disc this is an indication that the retina is detached if you see on the uh, of the this type of the picture you can see on on the b scan ultrasound of the eye in which you can see the in the cases when the lens is opaque and you cannot see directly on the retina then it is the ultrasound which helps you to see the whether the retina is attached or detached and this will be the picture which you, you look look at the of the retina on b scan you will see that the separated retina is still attached to the optic disc the exudative detachment the cause as i have told you there is an inflammations or the tumors of the uh, of the uh, sometimes the vascular tumors of uh, of the choroid or the retina they can cause they can cause the exudative detachment and among this there is the exudative choroiditis the angiomatosis retinae and the toxemia of the pregnancy they are one of the few uh, causes these are the few causes of exudative detachment solid retinal detachment or a detour so today's again i say that this is the main topic of today we'll we'll discuss it half the way around and then we'll do it in the next uh, uh, lecture as well the same same topic will continue
this is the the commonest type of the retinal detachment or we we can we can say uh, an abbreviated name of retinal detachment rd so it is the commonest type of the rd is the rachmatogenous or primary retinal detachment as i already told you rachma is the latin name of the break or the hole so whenever you look at the present you see the presence of a ragma or a hole in the retina and there is retinal detachment we call it a rachmatogenous retinal detachment What are the predisposing factors? What are the predisposing factors in the retinal detachment? To remember these four predisposing factors for the primary retinal detachment, you may remember the word RATH. R A T H. R is for retinal degeneration. A is for aphakia and pseudophakia. T is for trauma, and H is for high myopia. These four conditions. They are. If uh, I if I can. Uh, I, I just guide you to remember the four things. Most of you have to remember four things. You have to remember the four things about retinal detachment. The the first thing is definition. The second is predisposing factors. Number the the third is it's a. Presentation, clinical features, and the fourth is, is a treatment. Four things you have to remember. The minimum you require in your final course year is to remember four things about the uh, about the retinal detachment. One is the definition. The th second is the classification. The third is uh, uh, predisposing factors, and then the uh, the, the treatment. Every uh, part of these four points have got again they have got four points the the first the classification again there are uh, well, four classification four names you have to remember primary data detachment uh, and then the among the secondary the tractional the the exudative and the uh, the solid and then the predisposing factors again you have to remember the four points the retinal degeneration the aphakia and pseudophakia the trauma and the high myopia while you will in the next lecture when you will learn about the presentation again there are four f's and when you learn about the treatment you will learn that the again there are four points in the treatment of the of the so remember the four points in the cases of retinal detachment so the predisposing factors as you can see the uh, retinal degenerations among the retinal degeneration most common Although there are many retinal degenerations which are used, which which are there, but those which are predisposing, they are associated somehow with the with the development of the retinal degeneration are fine. The lattice degeneration very common, the most common degeneration associated with retinal detachment. It appears as thinning of the retina at the equator. Circumferentially they are present and they are having crisscrossing lines all over them, and this is. This is just like जैसे हम कहते हैं ना कि कपड़ा जो है वो छिज जाता है और वो पतला हो जाता है with passage of time और अगर आप उसको बार बार उसको injury करते रहें तो इसी तरह से यूँ समझें कि retina जो है वो different areas में at the equator ये छिज जाती है that there become thinning of that part of the retina with the few of the fibers crossing criss crossing and I just show show you few of these pictures of the lattice degeneration. Then there is a white without pressure. This is again in the pale area of the retina. Uh, it seems that there is no blood uh, in that area. But although this is not an ischemic area, but I mean that ischemic, which is there is no occlusion of the blood vessel, but still it appears white. And it is sometimes the predisposed area. If you you press upon this area, it become white. But this is the area which is white even without applying the pressure. Then there is a focal pigment proliferation of the clumping. And there is a diffuse choroidal degeneration, and retinoschisis is a term which is used for the separation of the retinal layers within the neural retina instead of separating from the pigment epithelium. Sometimes, very rarely, it happens that uh, it is separated within the neural layers. So this sometimes gives rise to the the act, actual retinal detachment. So these five are the uh, 
So look at this picture. You can see that there's a uh, there's blood vessels around. There's a whitening, and the, the, these these are called as snowflakes. Small whitish area which is present around the blood vessel. There is a whitening of the blood vessels, and they, this is one type of the lateral de degeneration. The, this time when there is a pigment clumping over this, and there's the crisscrossing lines, and this is the area of the thinning of the uh, of the retina in lateral degeneration. The, this is the white without, without pressure. You can see the area which is present, the going blood vessel on this area. And this is also considered as one of the... This, uh, this slide on the right side is, is, a, is a diagram is a, uh, which, is make, which is made to express that how the lattice degeneration complicate to become a retinal detachment. As you see, the, in the areas, these are crisscrossing fibers, there's a pigment on there, and this is all is the, is the degeneration, the lattice degeneration. And you can see small holes in this area of the different types. There's a U-shaped hole with the, with, with the, with the tongue-like uh, uh, area of separated retina, and there's a small holes rounded, and you can see these are red small holes here and in the area of the retina. There, this is, there is a small area separate other than the area of the lattice. So all those can give rise. So you see this area where there is a, uh, a, a hole, you can see a whitish area around. This is what is a subretinal fluid and the retina has started separating due to the presence of this hole. The other, the other predisposing factors, trauma. The, the trauma can give rise to, uh, to the retinal attachment different ways. It could be a penetrating injury, direct injury to the retina and the vitreous retinal attachment. And sometimes it is the blunt trauma which gives rise to the, to the detachment. You just see that if there's a trauma to the interior part of the cornea and it causes compression of anteroposterior compression of the eyeball, so it enlarges on, on horizontally. And when it comes back, it pulls the retina from the, from the pigment epithelium and results in detachment. And sometimes you can see there's a large area of the retina can be pulled from this area, giving rise to the supranasal dialysis. So the next is the high myopia. The higher is the refractive error, higher are the chances of retinal detachment. And there are, there are other factors as well, because in pathological myopia, there is high incidence of lattice degeneration, snail tract degeneration, diffuse correlation degeneration, and the macular hole. Among these, first, third, and the fourth, they are all predisposing degenerations to the retinal detachment. And, uh, and so, aphakia and pseudophakia, again, they are very uh, common. These are the features of pathological myopia. You could see in the left picture, there is a hole in there and there's a sphere correlated degeneration with the holes and this will give rise to the detachment. And this is again very complicated case, whole retina is detached, very large dialysis in this uh, hole in the, in, the, in the temporal part of the, of the retina giving rise to the total detachment. So the, this, this, these are the predisposing factors. And uh, then in the next lecture, we will talk about the symptoms of the retinal detachment and the management of the retinal detachment. Thank you very much. Any, any questions you want to ask?
Any questions, please? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for coming and attending the lecture if you have.